Welcome back to Red Hawk Media. Today, we're taking a little bit further in-depth look at GarageBand. Um, so, to start with, um, last episode we covered a number of the basics of how to import tracks. This episode, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at how to manipulate those tracks and some of the basic features that you can do there. Uh, to begin with, I'm just going to start off with an empty project. Now, if you wanted to continue work on a project that you've already you know, started on, you can go to recent and then that'll show you some of the different stuff that you've been working on recently if you have an, uh, an existing project that's somewhere else you can also come in here and then you can locate that you know manually go to wherever you've been saving that project so if you saved uh, the last project that we were working on to your desktop you can navigate to that okay I'm gonna go back and say that we're gonna start a done empty project and choose once we're into the layout of GarageBand, it always prompts you to add your first track in. Now, some of you realized, um, I'm sure, that if you go with the keyboards, it adds in a whole slew of different software instruments. If you go with the, uh, the audio with the guitar and the amps, it'll add that in. And, of course, the drum kit will add in a bunch of stuff, too. I find it easy, that, probably easiest, that if you're going to be composing with um, the loops and you don't want a pr bunch of pre-made stuff that's in there already, you're just going to start off with the, the microphone. So I'm going to go ahead and create this, and now it adds in that first loop. Now, in here, in GarageBand, I've got my first loop in there. Um, there's nothing actually in there. So we learned last time how to bring loops in. Let's go ahead and start with that very quickly. I'm going to go over to the loops. I'm going to go ahead and go to the, well, let's go to the beats to begin with. And then we're going to go ahead and grab something along here. Okay, so we got this beat. We're going to drag this in here. Okay, now this beat, you can see that the loop is set up. The idea of a loop is that it's uh, going to repeat over and over. Yesterday we talked about some of the features that's related to that. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see some of the icons that are going on. Up in the upper right hand corner, I've got this little squiggly thing that basically will allow me to drag out my track infinitely. I don't recommend that because it eats up a lot of processing power and it's going to slow things down in GarageBand quite a bit. But stretch it out a little bit at a time as you need to um, as you're adding on to your song. So this beat will just keep playing over and over and over and over. Now on the other hand let's say that we're not going to take that and extend it out. We're going to actually shorten the clip. If I go down to the bottom right hand corner of the uh, loop I can actually shorten this up shorter. Okay, so I can come in here and trim. Now let's say, just for um, the sake of learning to how to do this, that I don't want this middle beat um, in particular in the loop. What I can do is I can position the playhead okay, to anywhere around that. So I'm going to go right in between there, and I'm going to hit Command-T. Okay. Now I'm going to go over to the next part of the clip on the other side here, and again, the clip is selected. Make sure it's selected, otherwise it won't cut that clip. And I go Command-T again. And now I've just cut around the part that I don't want. I select that part, and I hit Delete on the keyboard, and voila, it's gone. So now if I wanted to, I could reformat this and totally put this together as two likewise beats that come together. Okay, And if I want to keep repeating this process over and over here and do it in an easy way, I'm going to go ahead hold shift and click on both of these. Okay, I'm going to go command C to copy them. I'm going to make sure that my track that I'm copying into is selected and then wherever my playhead is is where it's going to paste these in. So now I can go command V, command V, command V, command V and you get the idea. Okay, So that's a very quick way that we can manipulate a lot of these clips. So I've got one track going right now. Let's go ahead and zoom back out and now we're zooming back in over here. Now if I want to um, find a new uh, instrument or mood or genre of music. I have to click reset and then that resets all my options here. And now I can come in and I can grab something else. Let's say uh, let's say we're going to use the banjo. All right. I'm going to go ahead and grab down home banjo. I'm going to zoom back out here. And then I'm going to take this and drag it into my workspace. Let's go ahead and zoom out the rest of the way and drag that over here. And now I can start to line this up. Now the banjo is an instrument that I want to fade into the composition. Okay, So I've got the beat, the beat's going to be going, and then the banjo is going to fade in along with this. All right? right now, I've got the volume control over here, so I can turn it up or turn it down. Okay, So if I put it to 
all the way into the plus side here, it's going to be extra super loud. Okay. However, I don't want to monkey around with that because these changes aren't are for the whole track. I want just a temporary change on the banjo so that it fades in. So up here, this is the button that we're looking at. We're going to add some automation. The automation that we're adding is actually to the volume bar. And the volume bar is very faint here through the middle of the track. You can see it. And I'm going to add in anchor points along that volume bar. So very quickly, I'm going to click in some anchor points. I'm going to take this down. I'm going to extend out my fade for however long I want it to fade in. Okay, And now what we'll have is the banjo. We'll have the beat at full volume and the banjo fading in as it comes in here. Okay, and you can see even on the volume slider here, if you watch over here as I scroll along, you'll see that go up and ramp up as it goes. Now, likewise, let's say at the end of my song that I'm creating here, I want it to fade out. Okay, I can add on two anchor points again. Okay, and these are movable, so it doesn't really matter where you create them. So I can fade that down. Let's say I want it to be a long fade for the whole last part of the song here, or in the middle, wherever I'm adding this instrument, it'll create that fade out. So again, it's ramping down, and you can see the volume go down to nothing there. Okay, So those are a few of the basics here, um, kind of our next steps for uh, stylizing our clips, um, our loops, so that we can create a little bit more intricate mix of music. And it'll give you some volume control as well. All right, that's just some quick basic tips here from Red Hawk Media. Thanks for joining us.